The Bible is God speaking to me. I am what the Word of God says I am. I can do what the Word of God says I can do. I have what the Word of God says I possess. I am a believer, not a doubter. My mind is renewed with the Word. Therefore, I'm thinking those thoughts that please my Father. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name. Okay, that was a prayer for you guys. I, I have to, it's just my natural habit to pray for myself uh, before I begin. So you can put your Bibles down. I think I got to pray for me delivering the word today. So I thank you, Father, for this awesome opportunity to be used as a vessel to speak to your people. Father, the words that I speak tonight, I decree and declare, are not my own words, they're not my opinions, but they're my thoughts and my speech come directly from you. The word that I speak has anointing on it because it is your word. My word does it, but it is your word that is medicine to our flesh. It is your word that will transform our lives. So Father, I submit myself wholly to you to be used as a willing vessel to feed your people. We have come here today to receive from you, Father. We have the expectation of doing so. So I pray that the word that is spoken, it meets every need, every single need of those who are in attendance and for those who will watch later. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. This time is holy. It is set apart. So you do as you choose, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name. All right. So let's get started. So as I was preparing for this message, I was... Um, I was thinking about, like, I haven't been up here in a, in a long time, and I, I have, when I think about the last time I was up here, I taught on the message called Eyes, uh, I believe it was Eyes to See. And I'm just thinking about all the things and the revelation that I received between uh, then and now. And I was, I was so excited because I'm like, what can I share with uh, the people that I am growing up in Christ with? And so as I was talking to the Holy Spirit, I was like, God, what is it that you want to share with your people? And I, um, I just heard in my heart, keep it simple. Keep it simple. And then I heard the simplicity of God. The simplicity of God. To keep it simple. Am I loud enough? Can you hear me? Oh, here we go. Is that better? Give me a thumbs up if y'all can hear me. Good, good, good. Okay. So the simplicity of God. And so as a teacher, I, so studying for this and, and just thinking about my job as a teacher and what I'm tasked with doing. I'm tasked with providing instruction. I'm tasked with um, correcting. I'm tasked with uh, bringing clarity. I'm tasked with also giving hope, right? And sometimes, you know, as I, I'm a math teacher, I'm looking at my students, especially, especially with math, I'm looking at their faces. And I'm looking at how they are intimidated sometimes by the material that's presented on the, on the screen. And by the time they reach me, they have, uh, they're probably in ninth grade, ninth grade to all the way up to 12th grade. And so they've learned how to do order of operations, they learned how to multiply, they learned how to do all the different uh, little concepts you learn in math. And so they see this problem, which they assume is complex. And so at the moment, they, they're like, what can I do? Like, what can I, uh, like, I don't even know how to approach it because they're trying to think of everything in the world to, to solve this problem. And so my job as a teacher, I'm like, just relax. Like, let's take a step. What is the goal? My question to them is always, what is the goal to solve this particular problem? And say we're doing an algebraic problem and there's a variable. And so, I point out to them, if, they, if they're not sure, I point out to them, our goal, no matter how complicated this problem looks, our goal is to find the value of the variable, or the value of x. And so um, I, I tell them to keep their eye on the goal. And so as we're looking at the goal, as, we're, as we are analyzing how the problem uh, looks, we decide on how we're going to approach it. How do we get to X? And then it becomes a whole bunch of pulling back of layers, doing a whole, doing a series of different um, uh, arithmet arithmetic, like uh, what's it called? Um, adding, subtracting, dividing, all of that stuff. But when I make them focus on the goal, it becomes a lot easier for them to solve the problem because they are remembering, they're recalling, I need to accomplish this thing. 
And so as I was preparing for this message, I thought about what is the goal? Like, what is the goal for us as Christians? What was uh, God's goal in creating us, right? And so that's what I'm here to talk about today. The simplicity of God, why God created us. And so for me, I've been on this journey of just flowing with the anointing and, 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 and understanding what it means to flow in the anointing, to let go of my own control with my own thoughts, because we know God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. So I'm like, I'm, I've become mature enough to understand, you know what? God knows best. And I, I'm submitted to that. I'm okay with it. And I'm excited about it, right? And so my goal, my personal goal is to truly understand it, who God is. That's my goal. And so when I'm reading scripture, my goal is to find out who God is. Like, because I, I realized in studying scripture before that just reading the Bible, it could be a bunch of words on the, on the page if you don't go in there with an intention to learn. Or, or you don't go in there with any intention at all. Like you just start reading chapters. If your intent is to get through a book, then maybe you'll just read it and you'll just get through a book and, and you will have gained nothing from it. But as I'm, I'm learning, if I want to get something from the Bible, if I want to get something from God, then I have to seek him for that thing, right? And so I've been uh, seeking like how to, how to operate, how to function, how to be fully aligned with him. And so what I've come to, every, every time I, I teach, or most times I teach, my starting practice is to go to Genesis 126. So I'm not going to change anything. Let's go to Genesis 126 of right now. And so I'm talking about goals. Like, what is the, what is the goal? And my goal is to understand who God is. And so in Genesis 126, actually, if, if, we're going to read uh, Genesis um, 26, 126. But if we re read just from the beginning, of it, we understand, as I'm seeking who, who God is and what God does, that God is the creator, right? We all can agree that God is the creator. And the more I learn about God and the more I see God, you know who else I'm able to see? Myself. So as learning about God and learning about all his attributes, uh, I, I thought about this earlier when I was thinking about God um, and, and just thinking about like human beings. Like when we look in the mirror, we see something, right? We see an image of ourselves. But it, as we read, well, let's go read uh, Genesis 126. So Genesis 126 says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them and said unto him, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. And he goes on to say some other things. Hold on, let me move this down. Sorry. Maybe to stay up. Okay, can y'all hear me? Okay, good. And so as I'm reading that about God, and just to go back to what I was mentioning earlier, when we look in the mirror, we see an image of ourselves, right? But I was thinking about when we, when we look at God, or when we think about God, or when we say, I, I see God, do we mention any physical characteristic? You can you say yes or no. No, we don't see, we don't mention any physical characteristics. So when we talk about God, what do we talk about? We talk about his character, right? And so we talk about his character. We talk about the things that he's done. We talk about God spiritually. So when we talk about, when it mentions in the Bible that we are made in his image, right? We're not made in his physical image, which all of you guys know, because I know you're Bible scholars, but we are made in his spiritual image, right? And as spirits... We, as spiritual people, we have been empowered to prosper, right? We have been empowered to, uh, it says, to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, subdue, and to have dominion. 
because we are made in the image of God. That is what God does, and that was what he called us to do, right? And so as I continue to study, I often, I often reflect on where God said where we were from the beginning and then where we are now. Again, this is the title of the message is The Simplicity of God, and I'm going to get to that. And so back to understanding the character of God and me looking, for the, uh, looking at God and not wanting to see God, wanting to, to study God, I get to like, oh, God is omniscient. God is omni uh, omnipotent. God is compassionate. God is loving. And God is all these things. And one place where I got a little bit, I don't want to say stuck because I'm not stuck, but I wasn't, it wasn't as easy for me to grasp was God's glory. Because I'm like, I read the Bible, and I'm like, I see, like, it mentions God's glory, his splendor, and all I could really imagine was, like, light. And, like, this big, uh, this big light that shines, and, and I'm like, okay. God has, is, is, is God, God is synonymous with his glory, right? And so we are made in his image, so then how is his glory, how are we glorified in him? Or how does that work? How, how are we the image of his glory? And so as I was going through scripture, I saw everything that God has created, right? It's created by his glory. All right, so let's actually go to scriptures. So it's three scriptures I want to go to. Again, I'm talking about the simplicity of God. And the simplicity of God is, is what I'm going to define right here as we go to the scripture. Revelation, the first one is Revelation 4.11. Revelation 4.11. Okay, good. Thank you. So it says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure were all things created. So let's, let's keep that in mind. God created all things, and for his pleasure all things were created. Every time God created um, something, he said what? Y'all can say it out loud. Is, is good. Every time God created something, he said is good. Does that, also, um, does, does that also count for man? He saw man and he said man is good. Man is probably great because man is made in his image, right? Let's go to another scripture. Go to uh, Psalms 19 verse 1. Psalms 19 verse 1. everyone there. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show forth his handiwork. So the heavens, that's the glory of God, right? God created everything for his pleasure. Last verse we want to, I want to look at as I'm talking about the simplicity of God and, and what that is. Let, second one, or oh, third one, excuse me, is Isaiah 6.3. Isaiah 6.3. Okay, so I'm going to read the whole thing, but I'm really focusing on the latter part. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And so I'm thinking about that. And then I'm thinking about how he created everything for his pleasure. The heavens speak of his glory. Even um, in Matthew 6, I believe it's uh, 27, where he, where he talks about Solomon and, and uh, even the, 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 the glory of Solomon wasn't like one of the flowers. So that was, that was a flower is, is God's glory. Like what fills up this earth? Everything God created. So for me, when I say the simplicity of God, if we just, you know, 
peel away all the, the layers. Like we could talk about so many complex things. We could talk about um, faith on, a, on, on many different levels. We could talk about how to pray. We could talk about how to worship. We could talk about all these things. When it comes down to it, what is the simplicity of God? And for me, as I was studying, the simplicity of God is that everything he created is for his glory. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, that gave me peace and that gave me rest. And, and I'm going to share scriptures with you and, and more information with you about why that gave me rest. But everything God created, he created for his glory. And so when I look at the, the um, ooh, I had it written down, I don't know. I'm not sure where I put it, but it was, it was a, a definition of, of a glory in the Old Testament. And when it was used with, in conjunction with the glory of God, it's the word kabod, K-A-B-O-D, K-A-B-O-D. But when it's used in conjunction with um, the glory of God or give glory to God, it was, it was used to mean a visible manifestation of God. Again, we're talking about the simplicity of God and how God created everything, right? And he created everything for his pleasure, and he created everything for his glory. And so I'm just giving you a reference that you can look up. The Old Testament is Kabod, K-A-B-O-D, and it's the visible manifestation of God. And then when we look at the word, uh, I, I pray that I say this correctly, uh, uh, do do dosia, I'll spell it, D-O-X-A. I had um, Google Translator for me, and uh, <laughs> I believe that's what it said. But D-O-X-A. And so this word is, is the New Testament um, definition of glory, and it says the attribute or the true nature of a thing. The attribute or the true nature of a thing. The nature and the acts of God in, in self-manifestation. And if there was a little, uh, I was reading um, about this, and there was one um, minister that said, what he essentially is and does as exhibited in whatever way he reveals himself. So when we talk about the glory of God, is how God chose to manifest himself, okay? So when we talk about the, uh, the glory of God, the simplicity of God, right? is how he manifests itself. So we talk about simplicity, we can go outside, correct, and see the glory of God. We can see the glory of God in the trees. I'm, I'm so fascinated by like how everything, because I'm a science teacher as well, how everything runs on a cycle. We have the water cycle, like nothing ever leaves earth, but they'll, they'll like tell you there's a scarcity of stuff, but nothing leaves earth. Everything stays here, but the water, it evaporates, it condensates, it precipitates, it stays as groundwater, and it just does, does that over and over. The water that we have, right, is the same water Adam and Eve had. That blows my mind when I think about that. The rocks that we have are the same rocks that Adam and Eve have. Everything has been here since the beginning, and everything God did, he did with a purpose so that he would get the glory of it. That's the simplicity of God. If we think about it in terms of God created everything for his glory, and then you think about yourself, that I am a manifestation of God, right? Because we're made in his image and we're blessed by him. And so, uh, hold on, let me not get ahead of myself. So remember I, I said I like to talk, when I talk to my students, especially my math students, I like to establish the goal. Well, that's, that was God's goal. I'm going to create these things, and they're going to glorify me. And so everything God created, he created for a purpose to glorify him. And I want you to say that in your heart. Everything God created, he created for a purpose. And so when I, when I think about that, I'm like, okay, God created me for a purpose, right? God created you, all of us for a purpose. And what was that purpose again? The purpose is to glorify him. And so I'm gonna go over um, some scriptures ab about that because when I thought about, when I was thinking about glorifying God and, and being the manifestation of, of him on this earth, I'm like, well, how? And I think because of my, the way I think, my analytical mind, I like to go from A to B to C to D. And sometimes I get in the way of God. 
because I'm trying to figure it out, and I'm, I want to do it. I remember I was talking to my friend Rocky years ago, and we were talking about God and, and the things that we experienced, and I was like, I wish I could just be a robot, because if I was a robot, <laughs> I would do everything perfectly, and I wouldn't have to feel the discomfort of mistakes. But now that I'm, I'm, I'm older and I'm wiser and I'm more mature in the Lord, I recognize that those things that I, I thought were mistakes were opportunities for me to grow. And so, uh, why did I say that? Oh. <laughs> so, um, again, the goal is to, to, for me to understand how, as I'm walking here on this earth, not only to see God, to, to learn from God, to see myself, but how can I allow God to be glorified through me? Like, I felt like there was something that I could do, right? I have a question. So, we are all made in God's image, right? Thank you. Um, are we all empowered by God? All right. Is God's word, does God's word return void? No. Do sinners glorify God? No, right? But we're all here made in his image. And we're all here, he all created us and empowered each and every one of us. And his word does not return void. But sinners can't glorify God. Well, why not? Because they can't see him, right? And if they can't see him, they can't be like him, right? But in John, uh, what was it, John, when, uh, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, he says, when he, uh, he said, unless you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God, right? So it should be our expectation that we see with our eyes the kingdom of God. And in seeing the kingdom of God as one made, one's made in his image, what should we also do? See ourselves. So going back to the question, I was like, well, how can I glorify God here on this earth? And, and we can name a whole bunch of stuff, right? We can name, like, I can, I can pray like this, I can do this, I can do that, I can do, like, I, I can do, I can do, I can do, I can do. But then sometimes when you're focused on doing, 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 that becomes work, right? And then it becomes sometimes an obligation. Do you know, guys know what the word obligation means? It means to be bound to something. So does that sound like freedom? No. That sounds like I'm chained to this thing, right? And you're not even benefiting from it. So instead of thinking, what can I do? I thought about what can I be? Because that's an existence, right? Not I got to do something, I got I to do all of this. But how should I be? And so in, in me asking that question, how should I be? I started thinking, well, if I made it his image and this is him, then I should be like him. And so then I should study his ways and, and, and seek him for how he moves because it says seek ye first in the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? So seek ye first the kingdom, how he rules and reigns, right? Because he, he said he gave us dominion, right? Dominion means that we are also to do what? To rule and reign. So if I'm watching how God rules and reigns, what is that teaching me? How to rule and reign, and not to rule and reign over people, but each of us have our own little, I don't know what to call it, our own little, I don't want to say situation, but we have our own experiences in life. We have our own tasks. We have our own things that God has called us to do. So as I'm watching him, how to be, how he is, I'm learning how to be, and I'm learning how to uh, have dominion, and take those things that are, that are in this uh, sub-kingdom, and I'm only saying that for uh, lack of a better word, but how to, domain, how to, how to subdue whatever's in it. I'm learning because that's what he does, right? I'm learning how to multiply in it. I'm learning how to be fruitful in it because that's what he does. So it wasn't like, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do, but what can I be? Who can I be? Well, obviously, I want to be like Christ, right? I want to be like God because everything Christ did, he said, I do when I say what my father does and says. That's how he controlled his dominion, or that's how he established his dominion, by being like God, not doing. Because he said, it is my father that does the work, right? 
And so, uh, let me go back to my notes real quick. So again, the goal of God was for us to glorify him. That's the simplicity of God. Everything I create, I desire for it to glorify me. Think about the birds. What do, what do birds do? Um, like, yeah, what do they do? They fly, right? But we can watch a bird and it's like, yo, this bird took flight, this bird does this. That bird glorifies God. Did it do anything extra special? It just existed as God created to it to exist. It fulfilled that thing that God called it to fulfill. We think about elephants, we think about lions, we think about trees. Again, science teacher, if it weren't for trees, we wouldn't have oxygen. We would die from carbon, um, from uh, the carbon intake, right? But a tree uses the light from the sun as energy to convert the carbon dioxide that's in it to yield forth oxygen. Again, to me that's fascinating because what does the tree do? The tree is just being. Do y'all get that? It's being, existing with the, with, well, I won't say, because I won't say with the understanding because a, a tree doesn't think, but it's being there to fulfill what God has called it to do. So if we took our, if we took a look at ourselves, right? And again, we're not looking at the image of us in the mirror, but we're looking at us ourselves as the image of God and who he called us to be. So, and not thinking about the work, but if we stepped in every scenario that we faced in life thinking, I am going to be who God called me to be, I'm going to allow God to be glorified in me. So when you step in a room and you step in a, in a situation, let's, let's say like, not even just you, let's go to the Bible, scripture. When we think about the Israelites, right, you have to face a challenge to see God glorified. Again, what does glorified mean? Glorified means, um, what did I say? Uh, the attribute or the true nature of a thing. The nature and the acts of God manifested. So in order for the Israelites to be free, they had to face that challenge of, of those horses and those chariots and Pharaoh, you know, soldiers coming after them, right? But they couldn't do anything. They could not do any work. But they had to be. They just, in that moment, they just had to be. In a, and being is a present state of, of existence. Their existence in front of that, in front of that um, a, a river, or sea, rather. Their existence and Moses leading them there and Moses acting on the command and them believing led to God being glorified, God manifesting, right? And so we have to, when we face situations, we can go into it fearful. That's a choice. We have free will. We have a free choice to go into any situation and be fearful. We have free will to go into any situation and have doubt. But we also have the option to say, I see this situation, but God... I'm made in your image. I'm, I was created just like everything else here was created for your glory. So just like Jesus said when he was about to go to the cross, he said, Father, the time is now that you be glorified. We could go into every situation and say, God, I am your child. I am your, I am your uh, creation here to glorify you. And me suffering, me having lack, me not being healthy and whole from the top of my head to the soles of my feet does not glorify you. And I stand on that. And so, Father, I thank you now. I give you the opportunity. I give you the space I receive of you for you to be glorified through me, for you to do what you have created me to do, for you to do what you have created me to do, which is glorify you. So every situation that we face, God can use it for him to be glorified. So if we approach situations like that, that's why I said I found rest. Because I'm like, okay, it wasn't about me doing. It's about me submitting to being. So there's a, a verse I want to go over. So I wrote down, um, so the goal is to glorify God. How? 
Well, as believers, we already have the heart, right? Our hearts have been transformed. But now, what else needs to happen? Our minds need to be transformed to see ourselves. Like, sometimes we, we see ourselves as a reflection of our circumstance. I'm a victim. I'm, I'm defeated because that's what the circumstance says. But remember, we are made in the image of God, so our reflection should be the reflection of God. God has the victory, correct? And sometimes when I think about God has the victory, God ain't, God ain't battling nobody. The devil might be trying to battle him, but God is God. Like, just imagine, like, you, you, you know you created something, somebody, somebody trying to come against you. Like, you look at him like, what? Like, I did this. Like, you can't come against me. So for me, it's just like God is. And so we should find our comfort in that, in that fact. But I want to go over uh, the scripture, Isaiah 43. And I'm going to read all the way down to uh, verse 21. Oh, good. Perfect. Uh, Isaiah 43. Are y'all following me? Y'all be good? Understand? All right. So Isaiah 43. I didn't hear you, Yana. Isaiah 43? Good? All right. 43, Isaiah, Isaiah 43. All right, there we go. So it says, verse starting in verse 1, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, and thou art mine. What I wrote down in, in, the, uh, in the little space in my Bible is that these are words, these are words of transformation. And what I mean by that, words of transformation, is remember our hearts are already new. We're new creatures, right, by our hearts. But our minds need to be transformed. These are words to transform how you think. He's my creator. He, is, he formed me. He's my molder. He's my redeemer. God has called me. I am his. So now when you think about, if you go into prayer, right, and it's not like I, I think I've experienced, especially because I deal with the younger uh, kids, the young, even young adults, some people have the, the, the habit of going to God and begging him for something. But he says here, well, the simplicity of God, the goal is for him, the goal for him creating us was that we would glorify him. And so when we read this, This is how you take care of a thing that you created. This is him talking to us like, I created you. I, for, like, I formed you. I, I saved you. I redeemed you. I called you and you were mine. I want to take care of you. I need you to understand that you are not by yourself. I need you to understand that you are not alone. I need you to understand that you are mine. You come from me. So as people that have come from God, it will only make sense to go back to him, especially when you're in times of trouble, to go back to him. So then he goes on to say in verse 2, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, thou shalt not over, overflow thee. They shall not overflow thee. Then thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall thou flame kindle upon thee. What I remembered when I was reading that. So they're going, they're going through the waters. He's saying nothing will take them, nothing will overthrow them. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil because of what reason? Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This is God saying, you're my people. 
I want to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you. Everywhere you go, I will never leave nor forsake you. Again, this is uh, words of transformation, transforming our minds, not to see ourselves based on our circumstance, not to see ourselves imaged as the things that are happening to us, but to see ourselves in the image of the one that created us. The one that created us says, I got you. I'm with you. I will take care of you. I will never leave you. I created you. And again, I said when I, when I, when I was thinking about how God wants to be glorified through me, this is him letting me know, relax. Relax. Let's keep going. Verse 3, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave, up, I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia, and Sebia for thee. And so I created, I formed thee, I redeemed thee, and I saved thee. Think about that. He created us. He formed us, redeemed us, and saved us. For what purpose? So that he could be glorified through us. He did all this so that he could be glorified through us. Now, if you take that into your prayer life, if you submit to that, if you, if you read it and accept it, like a lot of times we could just read it, but if we accept it as word, as we, if we accept it as his word is my bond, like, all right, okay, God, you, you're my creator. You called me, you redeemed me, you saved me. I'm trusting that, and I'm going to take you at your word. Not us trying to fill in a whole bunch of things, trying to add to it. Just take it as that. We will experience a rest and a peace that is beyond anything we ever could comprehend. Um, verse 4. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Wherefore will I give men for thee, and the people for thy life? Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let all the people be assembled who among them can declare and show us former things. Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it was the truth. Basically, in that verse, he's talking about those false gods. Tell them, what's the witness? What's, what witness do you have of these false gods? Bring them forth. Who told you, of, uh, like, who was the God that told you the things that were coming up? Me, not them. Who was the God that was letting you know? It was God, our God. The God of Isaac, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not these false gods. So he was like, bring them forth for witness. In verse 10, but ye are my witness, says of the Lord, for my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am him before me was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I even I am God, and beside me there is no savior. I have declared and I have saved, and I have shown thee uh, when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses. <laughs> Therefore ye are my witnesses. What are we witnesses of? God's manifested, uh, what about some, God's manifested glory. How he, how he proves himself to be our God how he shows himself strong in our lives. When we're, in a, when we're in a clutch situation, when we call out to him, when we truly believe, when we come to him believing that he is, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks them. He does that. And we are a witness to that every time. We are a witness to it. And um, verse 14, Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, 
For your sake I have sent to Babylon and have brought down all, the, all their nobles and the Chaldeans, who cry, who, whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horses, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They, uh, they are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I, because I gave waters in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, uh, to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. And this is a couple of notes that I wrote down um, for each verse. Verse 9, uh, verse 10, actually. Um, so we are his witness, his witness, a witness of how God has manifested himself. Verse 21, to show forth thy praise is a public expression of um, our gratitude, our thankfulness towards God for what he has done. So when I was reading this, in my heart, I saw the lengths God would go through to keep us. All for the sake of he desires to be, well, he loves us, obviously, but back to the simplicity of God. He created us, the goal was he created us to be glorified. So that thing, us, calls a thing, that he desired to be glorified, he's going to take care of it. He's going to preserve it. Because like, if you think you as a human being, what you would do if you created something? Y'all have kids, right? Y'all would y'all want to protect it. Because that, that child not only is a life, but that child represents you. And you pour into that child. You will do whatever you can to take care of that child. And God desires to do the same thing for us even 10 times better, right? Not 10 times better, infinite amount better, right? And he desires to be glorified through us. So those things that, that happen, God wants to be glorified through you if we let him. One last thing I wanna mention, um, again, cause I'm analytical, the way I, I think I have to break things down for myself. Cause I like, I like to understand the simplicity of something. If I can understand the root, then I can build on it. If you give me all the, the leaves and stuff, it's like, oh, this is a whole thing. So I need to know where it comes from so that I can build on it. So I'm like a, a thinker. Like I, I, something happens. I'm like, why did this happen? Why did I feel this way? Just so I can get to the bottom of it. So that's why this message for me was the simplicity of God. Getting to the bottom of it, God wants to be glorified through me. That was the simplicity of it, looking at being made in his image, right? And he's empowered us. and it, and he wants to be glorified in everything that he's created. And if I live according to that principle, then I should have the peace and the rest that, that he's talked about. But the couple words I want to give you guys. So how I break stuff down is knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Knowledge is getting information. So we have information. God wants to be glorified through us, right? But understanding means comprehension. And this is what comprehension means. The ability to grasp, grasp the meaning or significance. Knowledge is getting information. We have the information that God wants to be glorified through us, in us, all of that. Understanding or the comprehension, what is the significance of that? So I wrote, God did it all on purpose. All of this is on purpose. We fit into God's purpose. You are important to him. We are important to him. He created you and I so that he could get the glory. Okay, so we have the information. God wants to be glorified in us. The comprehension. What is the significance of it? He did all of it on purpose and he created us so that he could get the glory. 
That's the, the significance of it, so that he could get the glory. Wisdom is the last thing. I have this, I have this knowledge, this information, and this understanding. But if you do nothing with it, what good is it, right? So I mentioned this a, a little bit earlier, but wisdom is the application of the knowledge you received or the information you received. So I wrote down your confidence. It, for me, it, it gave my, like uh, when I was reading it earlier today by myself, and I read, I read, um, oh, what part did I read? Oh, hold on. 43, mine was Isaiah 43, when it said that I am your Lord. Where is it? Oh, well, in verse 3, in Isaiah 43, verse 3, when it says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy, thy, thy Savior. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One, thy Savior. I said to myself, that is the rock of my salvation. That is the rock on which I stand on. That God is my Lord and my Savior. That is my foundation. That gives me hope. That builds my confidence. So when I say confidence, I'm not talking about just this feeling, but I'm talking about the rock of your salvation, that, that um, what you walk on, what you stand on. Having this, this wisdom, understanding, builds your confidence to uh, when you walk into prayer. When you walk into a prayer room, I, like I don't know if you guys saw that movie War Room, and wow, that lady was going into prayer, and she believed she well, I don't, she's an actress, but her posture. She believed what she was saying. She wasn't she wasn't concerned about this prayer not coming to pass. She had full confidence in the words that she was speaking going forth. Why? Because she understood who God is. And in knowing who God is, she understood who she is to him. How she is a vessel made in his image to speak forth his word, to bring forth his perfect will. So when you go into prayer, it's not like, oh, I just hope this will happen. God, I thank you. Have, you have called me. You have created me. You have formed me. You are my savior. I thank you for giving me the word to speak so that I may see your perfect will happen and uh, come to pass in this earth realm. You created all this to be glorified. And if Father, I call forth your glory in the name of Jesus. That's prayer. That's going into a room confidently praying because you know who he is and you know who you are to him. Speaking to other people, recognizing, okay, in the flesh you may not like everybody, right? Okay. But everybody is created by God to be glorified through him, right? And the word that you might speak to them might trigger something in their thoughts that God wanted them to see. But if we come at them, you know, crazy and, and coming at them with the same energy they may be coming at us, we miss an opportunity for God to be glorified. There's so much freedom in just saying, God, you be glorified. Because that takes off of you doing the work. It's just like, all right, I'm, I'm willing to be obedient because I know who you are. I know, what you try, I know what you desire to do. And I know who, what you desire to do through all of us, not just me, but through everybody. So I submit to your will, to your way, um, so that your will be done. And I'm a part of it. Like there's, well, there's people that's not, well, he can use them, but they won't, they won't experience his glory because they won't recognize it. But what a shame it would be for us not to experience it. Like, I would feel like I missed out on life. If I couldn't see, like, it don't just have to be in this book. Like, we live it every day. And so we could just speak forth, have the expectation of God being glorified in our life. So that's my message for today, the simplicity of God. The simplicity of God is he wants to be glorified through us. That was his goal, that's what he set out to do and uses us to accomplish it. Salvation is the free gift that the Lord offers anyone who would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that with our hearts we believe unto righteousness and with our mouth confession is made unto salvation. I trust that you will believe God's word, that your faith will be in the risen Savior who came to give his life for you. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Would you pray with me this prayer of salvation? It's not difficult. It's very easy, but you must mean it from your heart. So repeat these words after me. Jesus, I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. With my mouth, I confess you and I receive you as my Savior. Jesus, thank you for making my heart your home. Thank you for living in me. God the Father is now my Father and the Holy Spirit has done a work in me. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, and thank you for guiding my life. In Jesus' name, amen. We're here to be a blessing to you at Spirit Food Christian Center. The way this broadcast is brought to you is by people's faithful sowing and reaping as a result of God's word being given unto them. So I want to encourage you, be a part of this ministry of sowing and reaping. The Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In this ministry, we believe that man must hear the word of God. For man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The Bible declares, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God loves a cheerful and hilarious giver. I encourage you, be a part of this ministry. Be hilarious in your giving and watch the Lord bring it back to you in many, many ways. In Jesus' name. You have been watching the Spirit Food Christian Center worldwide webcast online at www.myspiritfood.com. Join us for worship service each Sunday at 9.30 a.m. And be sure to check out our website for our weekly live broadcast and much, much more. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good.